everybody, welcome to this week's video on person-centred care in nursing. I'm going to be giving a simple overview to support nursing students, trainee nursing associates with assignments, lots of good references. It might help um, dissertation students as well if you want to use person-centred um, nursing as a concept for your findings in a dissertation, for example. Um, so I hope you find it helpful. Do check out my other videos. They're all free on my YouTube channel. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and thumbs up on YouTube. So I thought I'd start with a little historical background. I know sometimes people like to put that in their introduction, uh, but it's also good to know where the concept came from. And we need to start with Carl Rogers. He was an American psychologist. He's world renowned for developing the psychotherapy method called client centred therapy. And he was one of the founders of humanistic psychology. And he wrote a seminal paper in 1946 called Significant Aspects of Client Centred Therapy. So what did Carl Rogers say about client centred therapy? There's a really interesting YouTube video where he's actually talking and it's called Carl Rogers on Person Centred Therapy. And it's referenced at the end with the reference on the final slides and he's recorded as saying this simple sentence which I really like it's about accepting someone fully just as they are you need to be with someone understand them and care for them the reason I like it is because it's simple and it links to lots of concepts today so for example being with someone might link to the concept of nursing presence understanding them might link to developing a therapeutic relationship and trusting relationship caring them for them and accepting them might link to compassionate care where you respect a person's preferences you put yourself in their shoes and you empathize Rogers also suggested three attitudes that are key to the success of client centred therapy that therapists needed to um, demonstrate. That included accurate empathy, congruence and unconditional positive regard. Accurate empathy referred to the therapist's ability to understand sympathetically and accurately the client's experience and feelings. Uh, so being achieved through open communication and listening and empathy. Congruence means that the therapist is authentic and genuine, so it's linking to a trusting therapeutic relationship. And unconditional positive regard links to a therapist's absolute empathetic understanding that they value that person in front of them. This um, That all links to Rogers' 1946 paper and the full references at the slides at the end. So if we look at more up to date literature about person centred care and look at defining definitions, Person-centred care is a concept and it's ill-defined, which means we've got no widely applied standard definition. So I can't say person-centred care is this that's widely recognised. There's lots of characteristics and traits and, you know, widely agreed concepts around person-centredness, such as compassionate care, empathy, for example. A good paper that summarises the debate about defining person-centred care is from Byrne, Baldwin and Harvey, and they wrote an up-to-date 2020 review entitled Whose Care Is It Anyway? Defining Person-Centred Care in Nursing, an Integrative Review, and all references are at the end of this talk. These authors concluded that person-centred care is ill-defined and operationalised into practice. Another good paper you might want to look at is Brendan McCormack and Tanya McVance. They wrote a seminal paper in 2006, Development of a Framework for Person-Centred Nursing. And it gives a background to person-centred care and nursing and presents the conceptual and uh, theoretical underpin underpinning of person-centred care. And they also present their person-centred nursing framework. Um, this framework comprises of four constructs um, which focus on the attributes of the nurse, the care environment and person-centred processes and expected, expected outcomes. So attributes of the nurse similarly links to Rogers um, where Rogers mentioned about attitudes of the therapist, that attributes of the nurse need to be compassionate, empathetic um, and understanding, for example. Um, the care environment focuses on the context in which care is being delivered. Person centred processes focus on delivering care through a range of activities and expected outcomes are the result of effective person centred nursing. So what I find particularly interesting about the nursing framework is how they link to attributes of a nurse and the clinical context in a care environment, because we know not every single nurse is compassionate and using it, and it, it's not necessarily person centred. They don't have those person centred attributes. 
um, if we look at the context of, of clinical care, if we've got low staffing, we've got very limited time, that's going to impact on nurses' capacity to provide person-centred care. So it's an interesting paper, I would say, if you're looking at analysing and discussing nursing issues from practice. Following the original 2006 publication, Brendan McCormick also wrote a paper for the nursing standard in 2020. Presents a it presents a simpler overview and the paper is open access so anyone can download it. And as I said earlier, all reference list um, is at the end of this talk. So through some of your research and what I've already talked about, you're seeing that there's some core characteristics, attributes coming out linked to person-centred care. So I've just um, summarised a few here. Being person-centred is about thinking about what makes a person unique. What are their likes, their dislikes, their preferences around care? And to achieve that, you need good communication. So patients need to be well informed and involved in their decisions. It's not just about delivering physical care. It's about open communication, good listening skills. Um, and it's about enabling the person to get better through a trusting therapeutic relationship where there is shared goal planning and decision making. I'm not saying that physical care is not important, but also um, you need to see patients holistically as a whole. So we're trying to encourage patients to be engaged in the care. We try to meet individuals' needs and preferences as much as realistically as possible. One example might be using hospital passports, which I'll talk about later. Meeting a person's individual needs and preferences, the person should be treated with dignity, compassion, empathy, where you put yourself in that person's shoes. And also health services need to be joined up. Teams need to work collaboratively. Care needs to be coordinated. So this links to McCormack's work where the care environment is so important for person-centred nursing. The teams, the services need to support person-centred care. When I say coordinate, that links to a person's care plan being coordinated, up to date, um, so that their individual preferences are on there, clear clinical handovers. So we make sure that we, you know, that if a person needs to have um, analgesia an hour before physio, that they get their analgesia, otherwise it'll affect their rehabilitation. So it's all those personal aspects of care that are individualised to that person. The systems across the services also need to be smooth and coordinated so the correct information is shared and support can be easily accessed. If you're looking at person-centred care and you want more information about coordinating nursing care or decision making in nursing or teamwork in nursing, I have three videos free on my YouTube channel with some key references so do check those out too. So I know if you're a nursing student or trainee nursing associate, you often put Nursing Midwifery Council references in your essays. So if we look at the Nursing Midwifery Council, the code, professional standards of practice and behaviour for nurses, midwives and nursing associates linked to person-centred care. The code professional standards highlight your professional responsibility to make sure people's rights and best interests are at the heart of clinical decision making. So you might want to take a quote from the code to link to an essay and in my view it links most under prioritise people section and I've got a little quote here and the NMC this is um, current 2023 page six so if you're writing an essay in a few years time you might need to go and have another look at that code um, you put the interests of people using or needing nursing and midwifery services first you make their care and safety your main concern and make sure that their dignity is preserved and their needs are recognized assessed and responded to you make sure that those receive care are treated with respect and their rights are upheld and that any discriminatory attitudes and behaviors towards those receiving care are challenged challenge and under the prioritize people section there's lots more little bullet points so you might want to take a bullet point if you want to reduce your words down but um, that's just one example quote that potentially you could use. So looking at some practical application and some areas you might find helpful for your assignments. So firstly don't see the person as just an illness think about the person behind the diagnosis and value the person in front of you. So you don't just see somebody with Parkinson's disease for example which reflects a purely medical model or schizophrenia or addiction. Um, this reflects a medical model, a systems-based approach. 
the person has their own values, beliefs, understandings, individual to them and what they've experienced in life. So person centred care really is the opposite to systems based medical approach. In 2018, I wrote a very small reflective piece, only one page for the nursing standard, about how nurses did not see the person behind a patient's diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So you might want to read it. I was a lecturer practitioner. I got to know a patient who had Parkinson's disease very well on the ward and he came in regularly and he liked to write poetry. And this one time he gave an example, he shared a poem where our nurses shared a joke with three patients in a four bedded bay and he was left out and ignored completely. Um, he said I wasn't there at the time, but he shared how it made him feel through this poetry that he wrote. And I'm really interested in art and music being brought into nursing. At the time, the nurses in the bay had their back to him and they didn't involve him. And he wrote about how staff naturally navigated towards more animated patients than him. He felt that they just saw a man sitting in a chair, not smiling, as Parkinson's disease can decrease your facial expressions. But it didn't change how he felt inside. So it's looking at that, that person, not the disease. And he shared his poem with me and he used words like Parkinson's disease was a cruel jailer that made him feel imprisoned and changed nurses perceptions of the person that he was. And I also talk about a patient who had a tracheostomy and how scared they felt when nurses didn't communicate when they were trying to um, clean the tracheostomy or, or change the tracheostomy, I can't remember. So it's an interesting piece if you're interested in art and it just gives one example of not where not to um, view a patient as an illness. We also need to use a holistic approach to see the whole person that includes meeting a person's biological, psychological, social and spiritual needs. And holism is the common term for this philosophical approaches emphasising the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, whereas systems based care is about breaking down the whole down into parts, often focusing on physical and medical aspects of care. Nilofer Dennis Roy in 2017 writes an open access chapter that links to patient centred care entitled Holistic Care, Philosophy of Patient Centred Approaches and Spirituality. The full reference is at the end of this talk, and it might be good if you want to bring in holistic care linked to um, patient centred care or in other assignments or a dissertation maybe. Then we've got patient centred communication you might want to look at. Um, for us to deliver patient centred and holistic care we need to understand the whole person. What's important to the person? What are their preferences? What do they care about? What do they want to happen? What are their past experiences? What are their worries or concerns? And we do this through good communication, engaging with patients openly, through good listening skills and also through good teamwork, communication across teams. As I mentioned earlier, handovers, if a nurse doesn't hand over um, the individual needs of a patient, they can be missed. Communication, we need to use open communication to overcome, and we need to overcome challenges and barriers to communication to achieve person-centered care. So that's a great area to look at. Um, we need to spend time getting to know the person, look at the uh, looking at those attributes of the nurse. We need to show respect, compassion, and be non-judgmental. You might care for somebody with a hearing or a sight impairment that causes a barrier um, to person centred care because you, because you can't communicate and you might need to use different strategies to overcome those barriers. So making sure their hearing aid works, the batteries are changed, for example. You could care for a person who is confused and distressed due to dementia and look at other strategies. Um, you know, there's loads of stuff out there on dementia and, and how to communicate with somebody with dementia, for example, having a calm environment um, or a younger person who's delusional or paranoid due to withdrawal of drugs or a teenager or a child on the autistic spectrum who finds the noise on a busy acute ward distressing. So they withdraw someone with a learning disability who's nonverbal. So there's lots of areas you could potentially look at to provide person centred care where you need to overcome a barrier or bring in a strategy. So being person centred um, when communicating um, also links to the concepts of shared goal planning and shared decision making. 
one paper I've chosen is Kawami and Petruka. In 2021, they wrote a literature based study of patient centred care and communication in nurse patient interactions barriers, facilitators and the way forward. And it might be a good reference. There's lots of others out there um, that you could potentially use in your assignments. You might want to look at individual care plans using the nursing process, which can also be linked to patient centred care. So if we look at Ida Jean Orlando's seminal work from 1961, she conceived the nursing process um, that underpins our care plans and our nursing practice today. And uh, we use assessment planning, implementing evaluation at the basic level for patient care plans using individualised care plans. So they're supposed to be person centred. So according to the nursing process, care must be individualised according to patients and their family needs. And individualising means that the nurse formulates diagnosis and plans the necessary care based on an individualised assessment, patient assessment, and then evaluates the results obtained once they've implemented care. So to assess individual needs and preferences, you need to get to know the person to create their care plan. Planning individual care should be done with the patient through shared goal planning, open questioning, um, listening, implementing care through de shared decision making and evaluating whether nursing care interventions work or not by asking the patient. And we then adjust our care, for example, medications um, according to individual patient feedback. So and I have got Ida, I've got Orlando 1961 reference at the end if you need it. So I mentioned nursing presence earlier as a concept. If you're interested in using it in an assignment, um, there's two papers that I've linked here. Hessel in 2009 wrote a concept analysis of presence in nursing practice, presence in nursing practice, a concept analysis. And they discuss existing definitions of presence um, and evaluate cases demonstrating nursing presence that are explored. And Boek in 2014 wrote a concept analysis, a more up to date one, presence a concept analysis and stated that therapeutic nursing presence demonstrates caring, empathy and connection, qualities required to build rapport and trust between nurses and patients. It's about making time for patients care when you're caring for them, open communication and developing that positive relationship of trust. Some of you might want to look at hospital passports. Um, the passports enable people to be engaged in their care as the passport travels with them through their hospital journey until they leave. And there's lots of hospital trusts out there with hospital passports. You can download them. They're also on the NHS England website as well. Um, as a result, people's care and treatment can be more personalised and dignified and, and can be used as a basis for care planning as well. So often hospital passports have been designed for use for people with learning disabilities in hospital, but they can be used for lots of different people in other situations. They've got key contact and important personal information to the person. And there's also children's healthcare passports, which a parent or care, which might be a parent or carer led document, depending on the age of the child. Um, but hospital passports usually have sections like things you must know about me, how I can communicate what language, things that are important to me, such as how I like to walk or be repositioned, my likes, my dislikes. It could be a computer game or playing cards or watching football. So the nurse knows that if it's the FA Cup final, that, that person wants to be wheeled to a day room, for example. Two good papers to look at this are Northway, Rees, Davis and Williams. They wrote an excellent paper entitled Hospital Passports, Patient Safety and Person Centred Care, a review of documents currently used for people with intellectual disabilities in the UK. Okay. And also McCormick, Marsh and Brown 2022 using hospital passport from the perspective of adults with intellectual disabilities, um, family carers and health professionals are quality of study. So I hope those references help and they're at the, the reference list is coming at the end of this talk. So finally, do check out my other videos. I've got lots of them on my YouTube channel and I've got some videos that might help with assessments like reflective essays or your dissertation, writing aims, objectives or SMART goals or nursing presentations. Also, lots of topics linked to assignments like quality improvement, safe staffing, developing leadership skills or to do with placements like an overview of roles in theatres if you're going to a theatre placement. So I hope the videos help.
So finally, we got to the references. Um, I won't flick too quickly because I know sometimes it's hard for students to stop the video. Just to say there's quite a few that are open access um, and the HTTP links I'm not allowed to put on YouTube because it takes you off YouTube. So but you can easily find them. Um, so you'd have to sort of cut and paste your own links. And also you must adhere to your university referencing guidance as well. I'll leave that on for a few seconds. And I'll leave that one on for a few seconds. And that one. And that's the YouTube uh, video reference as well. So I hope you found this talk really helpful. If you have any questions at all, put them in the YouTube comments or you can DM me on Twitter or my website if you want a more one to one where it's not open publicly. Um, do check out my books. I've got two books, How to Thrive as a Newly Registered Nurse, that a lot of third years find usually quite helpful, actually, especially I've got lots of references in there for assignments as well. And how to prepare for interviews and develop your career. So good luck, all of you, if you do have any assignments. And I do hope that you found at least one slide helpful today.